his own body in holiness and honor, not with lustful passions like the Gentiles who don't know God. This means we must not transgress against or take advantage of a brother or sister in this manner, because the Lord is an avenger of all these offenses. But we know what commandments we must. Who else to call? You did the right thing. Have you told anyone else? No, but I fear we're too late. Adelaide? I'll show you around. The previous vicar was the house that heard before us, but it's been unoccupied nearly three years now. As you see, it needs some attention. A woman's touch is all it needs. I'm so glad you agreed to join me here. Well, of course. We are married, Linus. There is electricity. But, but, but it, it's prone to fail.
housekeeper has quite the green fingers. <laughs> Much of the house has been closed off to us. I, I think it's better that way. Make a home only in the rooms we can keep warm. We'll make it a home in every room. congregation since Reverend Hall and his wife moved out of the country. I rather fear things have lapsed in their absence. Bishop Malachi has entrusted me to bring the community back. Could be quite the task. Linus, you worry too much. This placement will be a success. I, uh, I've asked them to put some toys in her room. I hope she will be happy here. She will be. This house is wonderful, and we will support you in every way we can. Thank you. Father, we've come to share a meal in your honor. Thank you for bringing us together as a family. And thank you for this food. Bless it in our hearts, Lord. Guide our mealtime conversations and steer our hearts to your presence. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> it's very rude to start eating Adelaide before I've finished Grace. You need to wait until I've said the word Amen. Sorry. Right. You want to know? Mummy? Mm? Will you tuck me in as tight as her? She's blind, Mummy. in the brown hoods. I don't know. She won't tell me. She says it's private. Well, maybe she'll tell you in the morning. I thought to begin with, there were too many things. You were traveling, I had Addy, and I thought, I just thought it was a matter of time.
God's will that we should be man and wife. It's me, isn't it? No, it's not. It's not. This is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in lustful passion. Lioness? It's probably mice or rats, no more than that. You're talking about the voices. What did you hear? Nothing. Adelaide. What did you hear? It was nothing. I saw that in my room. Pendant. Yes, can I see that? <clears throat> the profession. Is it any wonder the congregation is so small when superstition like that's taken hold? I don't want to see that again, Betsy. Why don't you two go into town this afternoon? Hmm? I believe they're showing that Disney film. Frank will drive you.
I like your pendant. Earlier this year, the land forces of the Wehrmacht marched across the border into Austria, violating the Treaty of Versailles, demonstrating once again Hitler's aggressive territorial ambition. Once there, they received a rapturous welcome and cheering from the people of Austria, increasing the power of the German Reich. Eyes now turn to the Sudetenland in Czechoslovakia. Where will Hitler's lust for power at last end? Are we safe on our fair island? fascists over there, so you can be safe here. Come, the war effort. Thank you. Trust you enjoyed the film, man. We did, thanks. You ready to leave? No, there must be some spare iron around the house. So much of it isn't even in use. Why does God allow evil to exist? Why does he allow war? Because there are times, there are times when we feel his absence. But Jesus tells us, he, he warns us, that's much better. He warns us against taking an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Because violence, it only begets violence. And violence is a sin. So, our brothers who died for our country in the Great War, our sinners also are they. The church is closed. Everyone is welcome in the house of God, surely. War is a sin. And what is your vice, I wonder? <gasps> How dare you? You are in no position to... <sighs> Excuse me. The graves of 10,000 men was my bed, my toilet. For two years. Might you have also lived through that hell? You would not be so quick to judge, Linus. How do you know my name? Oh, I... I know lots of things. Forgotten lots of things also. This book is a history of the Manassian order, an offshoot of the Augustine, the Black Cannon, the local occupants of the monastery that burnt down a long time ago. You might have heard of this story. The house in which you now live was built on its ruin. What are you talking about? Have you ever asked yourself why you're here, Lance? Bishop Malachi didn't exactly pick you for your oratory skills. So why are you here at that house? What purpose is it you serve? You are the one who should not be here. Have you heard things in the night, perhaps? Voices, whispers, temptations? Is the house playing tricks on your wife's mind? Because it will. This tomb, not so far from here, Linus, that dates back to the Manassian order of which I spoke. Two people's bodies were buried there three years ago. Two bodies from your bishop, Malachi's orders, in a tomb contained by the church. I believe those bodies belong to the previous tenants of your house, Beatrice and Stanley Hall. Malachi has lied to you. The Halls emigrated to Australia very happily. If you don't leave right now, I'm going to call the police. You do not believe me, go look in the tomb, if not for your sake, for the sake of the little girl and your beautiful wife. Hey, my wife! Beatrice Hall lost her mind living in that house. They say her behavior was no longer befitting that of a vicar's wife. 
I think in fact he sent several of the local men may have noticed. That is why he killed her! It's also suggesting that she was a child. Illegitimate, of course. I don't know what you think you know. The halls are alive and well, and my family is none of your concern. Why are you so hungry? What about you, Uncle Peter? You haven't eaten anything. See, you're busy. When you're done, shall we go and play? The time, Mr. Wolf. It's three o'clock. <laughs> What's the time, Mr. Wolf? One o'clock. <laughs> What's the time, Mr. Wolf? Ready? Ready. 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 I'm not in serious now, Ready. Chamberlain is 
never wavered in his determination to establish peace in Europe. At the hour when the dark clouds of war hang most menacingly above the world of men, the Prime Minister took a wise and bold decision to meet the European leaders in Munich. History will call him Chamberlain the Peacemaker. The Premier returned to England on the same British Airways plane that had taken him on the outward flight. As he stepped from the plane, the Premier was handed a special letter from His Majesty the King. Then he faced microphone and camera once again. We regard the agreement signed last night and the Anglo-German naval agreement as symbolic of the desire of our two peoples never to go to war with one another again. Linus. Bishop Malachi. This is an unexpected honor. I'm pleased to hear. Surely I'm very much to be expected. Most stimulating conversation, Marianne. I hope you're both settling in well. Yes. Yes, thank you, Father. Personally, I find it quite disconcerting to sleep at a place so grand when so many others in Europe are struggling. Marianne, this is hardly the time. No. Please, Marianne speaks her mind. In difficult times such as this, God's grip on his people is weakened. A time when the strength of the church is more important than ever. I'm not sure the church alone will see us through what's happening in the world. Fascism is truly vile. Would you not agree? Marianne, that's quite enough. Would you, um, would you like to join me for a drink? I see you found Stanley's Bible. Yes, I was bringing it to you. You, you didn't know I'd be here. It's been defaced. He was a troubled man at times. I'm sure the sunshine of the colonies is doing him some good. How's the congregation? Mm, quiet, but that will change. The house, generous stipend. A far cry from the wiles of missionary work, wouldn't you say? Yes, it's very generous. I'm, I'm very grateful. You should be. She's a spirited woman. Fiery and strong. Hard to believe that she could sink so low as to give her own daughter away. Even if she did take her back. All those things that people were saying. Hell of a thing you did there. Really. Saving her. I try not to look at it that way. Anything you wish to tell me? About what? There has been a man Pagan. He was seen in town this afternoon. He's a charlatan, a storyteller. His brand of godlessness is dangerous. He's known to us. I thought I'd come sooner rather than later to warn you. You see, some people make a living creating myths and then selling themselves as the saviour. 
Please. Educate yourself. And call me if you see him again. I'll give you my word. Why would I need your word? I have your loyalty. yourself with Adelaide Manners <clears throat> men in Colchester were collecting for the war in Spain what men were those Frank our driver was amongst them it's not really any of our business Marianne they're gonna kill us aren't they mommy what do you mean the bad men we saw in the news Adelaide we are completely safe here. You shouldn't have let us see that newsreel. Perhaps. But equally, we shouldn't pretend that things aren't happening. There's no excuse for doing nothing. Fascists are taking control by force. Yes, but to oppose with force is a sin of exactly the same cloth. I can't support that action. I've arranged for a collection. We'll donate the metal that's just gathering dust. Natalie, why don't you go to your room and play? Let's go stop that for a moment and leave us, please. house is the property of the church, Marianne. It's not yours to give away. That's the end of it. I don't want you talking with men in the town like that either. I'm sorry. You're not cohorting with your artist friends. You're a vicar's wife now. You're not some... Finish that sentence. You're my wife. Am I? The deed is worth more than a word, Linus. In the same way, a touch is worth more than a look. Addie? Addie, come on. Addie. What's this room? 
Mummy says you're not to go there. Excuse me. Mummy says you're forbidden to go there. If you're not to look. Your mummy. I'm your mummy. You're not. You're not my mummy. Addy, I am your mother. You're not. You're a liar. Addy, will you, will you look at me? No. Addy, look at me this instant. No, I will not. Addy, please. Oh, oh, oh. Be very cool, Addy. This nonsense. Huh? Oh. First Adelaide and now this. Uh. Do I need to be concerned for you both? I'll have Betsy clean it up. I would say stress on both parts. It affects adults in the same way. Don't upset yourself. Children are unpredictable at the best of times, let alone after a big upheaval. Give her time. Her mind will settle when she feels more at home. I'm not overly concerned. But I am concerned, Doctor. Whereabouts are you living, Mrs. Forster? Morley Hall. You're... You're the vicar's wife? Yes, is that a problem? No, no. They shouldn't be there. As a child. What kind of evil will it last, I should think? Some kind that convinces one good man to kill another good man by telling him it's the will of God. 
I swore never to speak about what I saw that day, but I can't sit by and watch another family die. I don't want to allow that to happen. Malachi, stay where you are. Ah, take the pew. Welcome to my church, Bishop. I've been taking confession from our friend here. He tells me that uh, truth is power. Too much power can corrupt even the most peaceful of philosophies. People, their, uh, their minds turn them into um, you, Bishop. You. Tell me what you're hiding. Tell me your secrets. I said, stay where you are. Dr. Sutter, you've been taken in by a fraud and a charlatan <laughs> and a cultist who hides in his world of fairies and magic. Secrets. Yeah. What about that poor girl in Portsmouth? Your lies led her into the marshes and she drowned, didn't she? You should be in jail. <laughs> well, if that were true, I would be. Well, if they had more evidence, you would be. Why have you placed another young couple in that house? After what happened to the halls? The gentry that bequeathed that house to the church did so in the belief that it would be made safe or turned into free board and arching sport for whatever bloody game it is you're playing, Bishop. If you don't leave this place immediately, I'll see to it that you're interred in the darkest cell. And maybe I'll find the evidence that they couldn't. Oh. That would be very befitting. Your order, wouldn't it, Bishop? You. Find a new friend. Friend? Oh, I know. All about your German cohorts, Bishop. Sieg hei! Sieg hei! Sieg hei! I told him. I believe it's your round, Doctor.
Paul's pas. Yes, I just need to rest. Think. Seeing things. Yes, yes, I have. Have you seen things? A man. Yes. Do I go here? Hello. Guys, you find me very low point for today, anyhow. Clearly, this was a mistake. Mrs. Forster, you've come here for a reason, have you not? Have you seen things in the house, perhaps? Have you seen the monks? I have. Betsy's the one who contacted me. She's a very old and dear friend of mine. Can I show you something? <sighs> yeah, I've been investigating your house for some time now. This book is a history of the monastic old I sick perversion of the Christian faith. The grounds of your house now rest on what remains of its legacy. They believed in punishment for sin and that torture would bring them closer to God. If the book is correct and to be believed, then the deeds of the monastery have had a profound effect on the grounds of your house. Why have you married a vicar and yet you have had a child, your daughter, born out of wedlock? That is my sister's child. No. No, she's not. This is a lie you tell, a story that you sell to others. Do not deceive yourself, Mrs. Forster. Denial is the teat on which the beast will suck on. I beg your pardon? You rest the tent. I would apologize, but time is running out for you and for your family. The house you live in feeds upon the charade that you show to others. We only ever out yourselves when we are alone, are we not? Do you understand? This house turns children against their parents, husbands against their wives. This evil lurks in the long shadow of shame. Who are you? No. Who are you? When the darkness closes in, and all light is gone, and all you can smell is your own fear, Will you remember who you are? The shame of your illegitimate child haunts you. If you don't leave that house, the shame will kill you. Take the book. Speak to your husband. For the sake of your daughter, get her out of that house before it's too late.
Where have you been? Am I not permitted to freely walk around the parish? Am I not permitted an answer? Not when you speak with an accuser's tongue. What's that? Answers, possibly. Has that charlatan been to see you? There is something strange about this house, Linus. I have seen things, felt things, have you not? That man... That man is a fraud, Marianne. He, he poisons people's minds with, with superstition. Was it he who poisoned your mind? No! Give me the book! Oh, what? You'll become violent. It's a shame. Only jealousy fuels your passion. And when Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top... You'll find Linus in the church. I know. Do you all want to speak with on a personal matter? I have no secrets from my husband. <sighs> yes, you do. None that I would tell you. Linus doesn't know about your confession now, does he? A Protestant girl giving confession to a Catholic priest? That was a long time ago. I was ill. You were pregnant, shamed by the sin of your flesh, unable to return to your family. A hospital for the mentally infirm, your new home. What is it that you could tell a priest that you couldn't tell a doctor? <laughs> the doctor? told me that Ali had died inside me. That's why I became ill. They told me she had to be removed. They were lying. I felt her kick. And I did not ask for confession. I asked for the priest to hide me until she was born. But he didn't, did he? He called the hospital. And they proclaimed you mad. They couldn't abort. The priest saw to that. But the child was born and taken from you. Why ask if you already know? What I need you to understand is how you got Addy back. You see, as well as calling the hospital, the priest called me. And I came to visit you there. Do you remember? You were heavily sedated, confused, but mad. Oh. You're a mother in need of a child. It was I who got your daughter back. And I called the orphanage and convinced them that a mission I was running could care for you both. It was there that you met Linus. What is it you want? I know the company you've been keeping of late. I do not want you to listen to his lies. And I do not want you to leave this house. You see, I placed you here. Not because of your husband. 
but because of you. And I need to feel like I made the correct decision. Do you understand? Now we both have Adelaide's best interests at heart. A happy and loving home here at Morley Hall. Now if she were to leave, I cannot ensure that safety. God returned your daughter to you. God can also take her. Why didn't you answer me earlier? I was calling for you. I can't find Veronica anywhere. Did you take her? Of course not. I don't want you playing with these anymore. Marianne? Don't call me that. Mummy says you're going to take us away from here. That you're going to leave Linus. Is that true? 
Go to sleep. I don't want to leave this house. Go to sleep. She's taken by the house. Did did the house make you do what you did too? Stop it. I bet I it was a fucking house. <laughs> Mr. Me, can you help me? And he's gone. She's disappeared. Can you find her? Yes, I believe I can, but if we are to find her, we must meet this evil head on, face to face. We must go into the darkness of which I spoke. Can you do this with me? Yes. And your husband? Death made and a wife who is completely, completely mad. Done to 
you. You're not there anymore. Goodbye. Believe me when I say your husband did not kill Betsy. He is a victim of this house as was she, beholden to its powers and now held in its trance. This house is now repeating with you what it did with the hall. Linus, where's Addie? Linus, where's Addie? Go and find something of your daughter's that was precious to her, so that we might still, still tempt her back. Her doll. Yes. Very good. Clean it. Clean it. Oh. Clean it up, I will indeed. Linus. and mutilated a woman in this house. The woman now holds your daughter as revenge against the church that did torment her. The monks of the Manassian order are coming for you as they did that poor, poor woman. They it to open because she was pregnant. A child. With their child, they abandoned it down there in the darkness, blinded the woman to hide their shame. Now this poor ghostly soul has taken Adelaide as her own. Do you love your husband, Mrs. Forster? Yes. And do you trust me? Yes. Go! Go! <laughs> uh. <laughs> you there? I see you. 
Good. For now, but we must make haste. She had a child down there in the darkness. I can't survive down there. That is why she now claims yours as her own. Tenebrae. Was the ritual, was it not, Linus? The absence of light? Do you know this ritual? I do. Then we must use it to enter the beyond. From the sixth hour, there was darkness all over the land. At about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. He said, Wouldst thou be willing to lay down thy life for another, less worthy? Hast thou ever felt the pain of abandonment? Agony, for oh God, why hast thou forsaken me? Mummy says you're forbidden to go there. If you're not to look. your filthy, dirty past. Ah! Poor. 
heretic. Slut. I am a woman. A mother. But I do not regret the beautiful night I spent with Eddie's father. In fact, I cherish it. in shame. <sighs> well, me telling my face as you've done. Because I feel no shame. <sighs> you destroy your face because you cannot look in the mirror and see the man that you once were. <sighs> but I see you. I see your brother. <sighs> Father. I see three shameful men. And I pity you. Please, whoever you are, please just give my daughter back. I'm Mr. Wolf. It's three o'clock. What's the time, Mr. Wolf? It's two o'clock. to it that your child gets a proper burial and 
burial in the eyes of God. You deserve so much more. You have my word. We will treat you and your daughter with such care. History will be rewritten. Let them play. Can she have my dolly? So she has something to play with? Yes. I think she'd like that. Almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either in life or death, hear our thoughts and thanksgiving for those that we remember today. Fulfill in them the promise of your love and bring us all with them to your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Bill I'm you old goat. Oh yeah. In him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. As our Prime Minister is doing all he can to avoid war with Herr Hitler, to resolve this crisis of nationalism that's threatening to engulf all of Europe, I have had many of you ask me if I can help them to pray for peace. And peace is a, it's a good, it's a, it's a noble thing to pray for. But the only thing that's necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. That darkness, that comes when we fail to uphold the light, when we are driven by fear and blame others for the shortcomings in ourselves, when we exploit what divides us instead of what unites us. Let us pray this evil 
does not spread further. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 